Hi, welcome to the Pink Moon Tarot. I'm Nikki, the Pink Moon Tarotist, and today's video, I'm gonna give you a little walkthrough of my tarot decks. Now, I thought I had a lot of tarot decks, and then I saw some of the collections that some other tarot readers have, and let's just say I don't feel so bad about my collection now. <laughs> it's not anywhere near as extensive as some people's. I don't know how many decks I have here all together. Perhaps one of you will want to count and find out how many there are, but I'm gonna take you on a little journey of Nikki's Tarot. So without further ado, I'm gonna point the camera down so you can see the cards all piled up on my table. Look at these. This is all my tarot decks. <laughs> so there are quite a lot there, but, oh, I can't get that back into position. But, um, like I say, nowhere near as many as some tarot read, but I'm going to try and do this in some kind of order. Now, obviously, the deck that I need to show you first is the first deck I ever owned, and this was my great grandmother's deck, and it is actually a French deck, um, and it says you know fortune telling game on it. Um, the deluxe edition. She was very extra, my great-grandmother. Uh, it has the little sleeve on it and it has the booklet that, you know, is quite old and so has fallen apart somewhat, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but it's a full, you know, full extensive booklet the suits are done with, um, you know, each of the cards it just has a little bit of blurb about it. And then the ace of each deck has um, has more of a in-depth thing with a picture. Um, but the major arcanas are, um, and the court cards are separate. They have their own separate pages. Um, so you have, you know, the, the major arcanas are in the front. This book is so old. Oh my goodness me. I don't even know how old this, this particular one is. It's, uh, like I say, it was my great grandmother's. It came with this little, well, I say little, this huge, um, layout thing, which when I was 14, when I inherited this deck, uh, I used to use it, but I don't anymore. It's actually the Celtic Cross. And personally, I don't like the Celtic Cross. It's not a reading that I ever use. It, I have my own system and my own thing. So um, I don't use the Celtic Cross anymore. And then the box of cards, this is the front of the box. The box itself is just plain gold. And these are the cards. So you have the two little information ones like you do in a lot of them. And the back of the cards <clears throat> looks like this. And the cards themselves look like this. And this is why I know it is French. And I would probably horribly misspell it, mispronounce this rather. So I do apologize to any French speakers. Um, we have L'Etoile, which is um, temperance, or might be called patience in this one, I'm not sure. Um, and we have the Rene de Epi, which is the Queen of Swords. Um, and the Rene de Coupe, funny how I picked out two queens there, which is the Queen of Cups. And as you can see, it's quite a traditional looking deck. Um, but uh, not, not Rider Waite esque. There's the Ten of Cups, uh, the Chevalier de Epi, which is the Knight of Swords. He doesn't look very romantic at all, does he? Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's very um, very basic I suppose is a way of describing it um but it's uh it you know it was my, my great grandmother's deck it's very old and I don't use this anymore because it was her deck and you know although it was my first introduction to it and this was the one that I really um 
sort of cut my teeth on, if you like, with tarot and learnt the, the art of tarot with. It's just, it, it's not my deck, you know? So I don't really use this one very much at all anymore. In fact, I can't actually remember the last time I did use this. Now, I cannot actually remember the first deck that I bought for myself, but I know there are three that I got relatively close together. So I'll go through those ones next. One of my first ones was the Lightseer's Tarot. When I saw this deck, I was instantly attracted to it. You know, it's the fact that it's the Lightseer's and I always try to bring positivity with my readings and I try to, um, you know, to, to bring the light and I, I want to lift people up with my readings. I want to give them a sense of hope, a sense of positivity, the love and the enthusiasm that I have for my cards. I want them to be represented by the cards that I use most of the time. So, <laughs> so the Lightseer's Tarot is one that you will see in a lot of my readings. It is the deck that I'm the most connected to. This is the back of the cards, very nice design on the back. As you can see, it's quite well worn and battered now. Um, the artwork itself is just beautiful. This is the, uh, the Six of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Wands, the Five of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, the Ten of Swords, even the Ten of Swords, which is quite a dark card, is still very beautiful. Knight of Pentacles, you know, this the artwork in this card, in, in this card, in this deck is just beautiful. And you get, you know, a really nice box. It's got a little message inside the box here. It has, um, you know, just a normal blurb on the back of it and some examples of the cards, but it does come with a really nice booklet. And whereas, because I know the cards and I know what they mean and I, you know, and I intuitively read, um, I don't very often look in the books, but with this one, I did look in the book right from the beginning and it has really good sort of like two pages of what the, the, um, cards all about. It gives you the light seer side and the shadow seer side. So if you get a reversal, you read the shadow side. If you get an upright, you read the light seer side. And it also has these lovely little sort of affirmations in it. So like judgment here, it says, Hello, Essence. I invite you to show up every day. I invite my soul to shine unapologetically. So it's it's just beautiful because it has these little um, little affirmations, you know. So as I said, the Ten of Swords can be quite a um, scary card to have, especially when you get it in the Rider Waite deck. Um, because it is all about, you know, being stabbed in the back and, and, you know, dark energy and, and not very nice. But this one has, I am healing every day as its affirmation, because it shows you the meaning of the 10, which is the completion, the completion of a cycle. So I really, really like this little book. I think it is a great little book. And, um, and it's one of the decks I pulled out as a great beginner's deck because the book is so informative and because the cards are just beautiful and they're easy to work with. And I bonded with this deck immediately. Now, what I mean by bonding is, you know, sometimes you, you have decks that you connect with um, instantly. Some decks take you a little bit longer. Some decks you just never bond with. And that's, you know, that's just the nature of tarot. And um, it's important for you to feel that connection with tarot cards, because if you don't feel that connection, then, you know, you, you just kind of, <clears throat> you're just reading the cards. They don't have they don't have the meaning and the um, the sort of the gravitas behind them. You you know, it, it is about connecting. I connect with spirit. I connect with my higher self. I connect with the cosmos and I connect with cards. And it's a it's a working thing. You know, tarot is my tool of divination, which is what witches say 
when they use things like, you know, runes or bones or um, scrying, you know, all of these are different ways of um, divining meaning. So it's a divination tool and tarot is my divination tool. Um, <clears throat> and that is largely because I inherited my great grandmother's one and she was the original witch in the family. My great grandmother was a, um, a medium and she would talk to spirits. She was very high up in a spiritualist church. She used to give messages to people. And, you know, um, I learned a lot about the craft without knowing I was learning about the craft um, through my grandmother, my great grandmother and my great aunt. So, um, so this, you know, this became my tool. This became my way of of helping myself out, helping others out, of seeing what energies were around, seeing what I was working with. And that's what tarot is all about. So without further ado, let's get into some more of the decks. So another one that I got in the beginning was this one. I bought the universal weight rather than the original rider weight. Um, simply because this one was more bright and more technicolor. And I will do a comparison between this one and the original Rider weight at some point. Um, so bear with me on that. If you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison, I will do that. This one doesn't come with a particularly great booklet. It's just got the, you know, the little flimsy booklet that doesn't really give you very much information inside. The writing is tiny and without my glasses, I really struggle to read it. But this deck, this deck is special. Now, it's not because it's the universal weight. It's because it's my deck and it is my personal deck. I don't really use this one in readings. This is the back of the card um, on, on here. And um, I'll just show you a few of the cards so you can see the artwork. Um, as you can see, it's very technicolor very bright and nice and I like that um but I don't really use this deck so much on here and for private readings especially not now because I've fused with this deck I am so bonded with this deck it has become an extension of me and so I don't think that um using it on other people I don't know how it would work um but it has also become known in this house as the sarcastic deck. <laughs> because with this one, I am guaranteed to get told exactly what I need to know. And it doesn't mince its words. You know, it is, um, it will tell it like it is. And I like that. Sometimes I don't want that, but I need it. And um, if I have any issues or any problems, then I will turn to this deck and find my answers in exactly the way that I need to know them. And that's that's an important thing. I mean, you know, uh, it will tell me if I'm feeling sorry for myself. It will tell me if I'm being a drama queen. It will tell me if I need to buck up my ideas. It will tell me when I need to have faith, when I need to trust, when I need to go within, all of those things, you know, it will tell me it exactly as it as it is, you know. Um, so, like I say, this is a very personal deck to me. So, because of that, I did actually purchase the original Rider Waite, which I haven't even unwrapped yet. So, the original Rider Waite is here. And I got this one because it's slightly bigger, so I know that it's got a book in there. Um, and I will I will do a, an unwrapping of this one at some point. But I got this one because I thought, right, I need to actually have the traditional Rider weight for the channel because a lot of people recognize it and a lot of people know it and a lot of people understand it. And it is also the deck that a lot of other decks are based on. So even if the artwork doesn't look exactly the same, they will have taken inspiration from this deck. OK, so this is kind of a really important deck to have in your arsenal, if you like. Um, 
<clears throat> and then one of the other firsts that I got was this one, Norbert Loesch's Cosmic Tarot. Now, I did get this one secondhand. I didn't buy this in the 80s when it was released. I think it was released in 89. Um, and this one is 88. Yeah, 1988. I didn't get it in 1988, but I did buy it quite a while ago. So it's a little bit battered. Um, it was secondhand. I bought it off of eBay because I saw it on another tarot channel and I thought, I really like that. I want that one. Again, it's just got the flimsy little book with it. Um, and <clears throat> the reason I wanted it is because the artwork, again, is amazing. And it kind of has that, although it's 1988, it kind of has a 70s feel to it. And I just really liked that. I mean, look at that Ace of Cups. Have you seen a more beautiful Ace of Cups? It's just stunning. And I really, really like the art, artwork and the representation. And I also see in some of these cards, I can see in the inspiration for the people that were used in it. Now, I wonder if I can find him. There's a card in here that looks so like Sean Connery. It just, every time I see it, it just stops me in my tracks. Oh, and this one, the Prince of Cups. Now, I'm sorry, but is that not Johnny Depp? <laughs> you see what I mean? And I just think it's, it's wonderful. And I can't find the Sean Connery one, of course I can't. I thought it was that one that I had just then. Oh, and this one, Elizabeth Taylor, you know? They're just, to me, these these cards have been inspired by famous faces of the day, you know, and um, and I just love it, you know, and some people I, uh, you know, I'm, I recognize, but I can't quite put a name to because I'm really useless with names, but they, they really do have sort of a very familiar feel to them. And I love that, you know, it's, it's just so, so nice. Like, is that Bo Derek? Um, but yeah, they're just, they're just beautiful, beautiful cards and, um, and very, very sort of, um, I, I kind of feel like I want to say bow chicka wow wow whenever I use this deck, which, um, you know, it's, maybe that's just me cause I'm a bit odd. I don't know, but <laughs> anyway, this is my, um, cosmic tarot by Norbert Loesch, beautiful deck. And I love using this one, especially when I'm doing full moon and new moon readings, because obviously it's, you know, cosmic and cosmos, you know, and just kind of clicks with me. And I have different decks that, that I specifically use for different purposes. I also have decks that I don't use at all because I, I, I just, I don't know, I don't connect that well with them. Um... One of them, and I had to have this because it's one of the originals, like the Rider Waite, is the Thoth Tarot deck by Alistair Crowley. Now, this is, again, it's one of the first, um, you know, Rider Waite was created um, almost at the same time as the Thoth deck. And they were kind of, they splintered off from one another and created their decks. And this one comes in many different formats. Um, this is obviously quite a new one. Again, it's got one of those map things in it, which as you can see from the fact that it's still all folded up and shiny, I don't use that. Um, and then you have the cards here in a nice little box. It doesn't come with a particularly great guidebook. Again, it's just got one of those little flimsy things. Um slightly better quality than the universal weight one that I have slightly better paper it's that sort of shiny glossy paper so it's it's more sturdy um but again the writing is so small you know it's kind of impossible to read but the artwork for this again it's just amazing it is it is stunning artwork oh let me show you the back of the card so the back of the card looks like this and the artwork, or oh, like that it should be, 
The artwork is beautiful. You have this one which says um, luxury. Um, <clears throat> and what's this one? The Hierophant. <clears throat> and I'm just randomly picking some. We have Gain, which I think is the Nine of Pentacles. I might be wrong. Um, and then you have uh, Strife, which is the Five of Wands. You know, so they have little words at the bottom that kind of tell you what the card means. So like the Nine of Pentacles, you know, is, is all about getting your just desserts, getting your rewards. And so the word at the bottom is gain. Um, the Major Arcanas just have the name of, the, of it on there. So you've got the Queen of Swords there. Um, <clears throat> and you've got Satiety. Satiety. So being satisfied with the Ten of Cups. Again, it gives you gives you a hint at the bottom of the card what they all mean. And, uh, and the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. But here's the thing with this deck. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm quite hesitant using this one. And it's not because I think the deck is evil or anything like that. But I just, I struggle with this one. I struggle to connect to it. So it's, you know, I may connect to it at a later date and start using it more. But this is one of those ones that I have it because I wanted it, but I really don't use it. And it's a shame because it is it is a beautiful deck. It is one of the originals. And, you know, um, I feel like I'm sort of doing it a disservice by not using it. So I will get around to bonding with it and, and trying to use it. Um, <clears throat> but it's interesting that some of the decks you have, you just, you just don't connect with. Another one that I feel that way about is the Tarot of the 78 Doors. Now, I love this deck. And again, I saw this. Oh, yeah, it's there. I saw this on another Tarot Readers channel. It's actually um, Gemstone Tarot. If you don't follow her, then go and have a look at her after this video. Because <laughs> she is lovely and she's really, um, she's really great. She uses all of these decks, I think. I think. Um, but, uh, you know, Tarot of the 78 Doors, again, comes with a little paper booklet. But this one, I really struggle with. I really, really struggle with. Now, the the artwork, again, it's, well, it's unusual. Um, so we have here the Two of Pentacles, for example, and it's two people diving into a pool. You know, it's like, hmm, okay. Um, and we have the Four of Swords, with which is a blind person walking along the street. Um, but what the 78 doors is all about is the doorways. So there's, it's, it's more layered than a regular deck of cards. So you have the Empress, obviously she has her archway and she has her pillars and things in, no, that's the, um, High Priestess, but she has the archway here behind her. So that's her door. You have here the Knight of Swords and he's banging up against this door, you know, and there's there's a doorway in all of the um, in all of the things. And it is to do with the the meaning behind those doorways. So like you have the fool here with his key because the fool is is the one who's ready to open that lock and just go for it, you know, so. Um, so again, it's just one that I need a little bit more practice with in order to connect a little bit more. It's beautiful. It's a lovely deck, but, um, it's going to take a little bit of work for me to fully understand. And I don't want to just read from it like I would any other tarot deck, because I know that the doors and the keys and everything in them have meaning and, uh, and I want to understand that before I start using it on my channel. But for a more advanced tarot reader, this is a great deck, but I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner, okay? 
And even someone like myself, who's been reading tarot for 30 odd years now, you know, it's, um, it, I find it difficult. So, you know, just saying. Um, then I have another one. I bought this one recently. I already had this deck, but without the guidebook. And I got a little bit confused. Um, you know, I kind of, I got used to it after a while and I kind of knew what I was talking about, but I always like to have the, the guidebooks to see what the original, um, creator wanted you to know about the tarot deck. So I got this one because it's got this lovely little, um, little guidebook with it, which has, you know, the pictures and the meanings of each of the cards. Now, what I like about the good tarot, it's by Colette Baron reed by the way, what I like about this deck is that you only read it in the upright. And as I said earlier on in the video, I really like to give positive readings. I like to give a sense of hope, a sense of, um, you know, what to look forward to. And even if there is something shadowy and something a bit dark in there, I still like to give you that sense of how to to deal with that and of, you know, the clouds parting and the sun shining. That's that's kind of my intention with my readings. So this one really appealed to me because it is the good tarot and because you read it in the upright. But also, I mean, this artwork, this is the back of the card. Sorry, I keep doing that. The original deck I had was a lot smaller than this and it just had one of those little paper. No, it didn't even have a paper book. Um. But the artwork is just so beautiful, so stunning. And, you know, it's it's just gorgeous. I absolutely adore this deck. You know, even the swords. I mean, look at the swords. This is the Five of Swords, which is not a particularly nice card to have. But look how beautiful it is. And in this particular deck they have slightly different meanings as well, you know? Um, so it's good to have the book there because it gives me that um, that sense of what Colette Baron reed intended when she created this deck. So that's the good tarot. So how many have I done so far? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven decks already. Oh my goodness me. Right. Let's speed this up a bit. Okay, so another deck that I have is by the same person that did the Lightseers Tarot, and that is the Muse Tarot. And because I loved my Lightseers so much, um, and I saw this one, the Muse Tarot, I thought I just have to have this one. Again, it's stunning, stunning deck. And Chris Ann, she does she does really beautiful cards. Um, it's got a great little booklet with it again, you know, full of full of information. The only thing with this one is it doesn't have pictures. It's just the words. So you don't have the pictures of the cards. But, you know, that's not such a massive thing because it tells you the suit. It tells you the name of the card. And, you know, the cards themselves have the names on. The box is beautiful inside and out. You know, the back of the cards is so pretty, so pretty. And this is a really feminine deck, this one. You know, um, I think all of the cards are female characters um, that have people in them. Um, and like you have the Knight of Inspiration there and there's no person in it. It's just the horse. Um but you can see it's a very female based deck. Let me just pop you along a little bit with this. I don't want to go through a complete walkthrough. But the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Now, the thing with this deck, again, it's not a deck I would recommend for beginners because uh, <clears throat> Chris Ann has used different, um, different descriptions for each of the cards. So you have, you you know, as a as a seasoned tarot reader, you can work it out quite easily. So like the five of emotions, I know emotions is cups. So I know that that's the suit of cups. And then she has, of course, I'm only going to get emotions now, aren't I? Yeah. So the five of inspiration um, would be the five of wands, you know, because um, 
ones are the inspiration and then um the voices so you have the two of voices here voices is the swords so you have different um representations of so yeah so like pentacles is called materials isn't that beautiful though um, so you have different different uh, words for each of the things, but you also have um, some different cards like this one. Not too difficult to work out the priestess, you know, so that's the high priest or the high priestess. And you have the empress and you have the fool, but then you'll have something completely different. Um, you no, know, we've got temperance. And of course, I can't find one now, but, um, you know, they'll, the, the cards are just called by slightly different names and it, it can be confusing if you're starting out, is my point here. So, you know, I mean, just look at the sun card, though. How stunning is that? Great big sunflower. <laughs> um, so, you know make it easy on yourself. If you're starting out, go for a deck where you recognize what the cards are, recognize the artwork, recognize the um, sentiment behind them. Or if you're prepared to sit there and read the book and learn the book that goes with them, then, you know, go for what you want. But it, but these sort of newer, more stylized decks, they are um, they are more difficult if you are used to the Rider weight, for example. Um, now, let's take it. Oh, I have a cute little deck here, which I've never actually... Well, I don't... I might have used it on the channel. Um, but it's the Wonderland Tarot. And the reason I got this, because I'm a huge Alice in Wonderland fan and um, I wanted a deck that was Alice in Wonderland based, but I didn't want a um, a cartoony one. I didn't want, uh, although it is cartoon, but you know what I mean. I didn't want one that was unrecognisable, shall we say, as the artwork of Alice in Wonderland. And this deck, it's tiny, absolutely tiny. This is the back of the card. This deck I thought was a lovely representation of the Alice in Wonderland artwork. And it's very recognizable for who each of the things are or what each of the things are. <laughs> the Queen of Hearts herself is death. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how appropriate is that? Um, and we have the Queen of Hats. <laughs> which which is the queen of hearts which i find funny um and we have the king of hats instead of the king of hearts um but again this is not a deck that is great for the um for the beginner because well for a start you don't have the names of the suits so you have to work them out like i know this is swords um and I know this is pentacles because it's planting. Um, but let's take a look. I think this one is wands, but I could be wrong with the pepper mills. You know, um, I really haven't used this deck very much at all. But again, when you are starting out, it's not great to get a deck that is going to sort of conflict with the, the knowledge of the regular tarot it's good to to stick more closely to what you what you are used to seeing and what you have seen other people using so although this is really cute and really sweet and I love it because it's Alice in Wonderland haven't actually used it um or not much and one I really haven't used because it's still in its wrapper and I don't know why I haven't opened it yet I kind of have that reverence of Oh, I don't know if I can open this. But again, another literary reference for me. I love Alice in Wonderland. I love the books. And this one is the Shakespearean tarot. Now, as a writer, Shakespeare is one of my heroes. Um, I love Shakespeare. This has got loads of Shakespearean quotes on the cards and it just appealed to me so much. It came up on eBay. It was stuck in somebody's attic for like 
30 years or something and had never been used. It comes with a fantastic book that's really full and got all the pictures and the information and I really, really love that. But look, I haven't unwrapped it because I just, oh, I just don't know. I can't bear to open it. It's like, it, it feels, it feels like sacrilege to open it. But I probably will do one day because the curiosity will get the better of me and I will need to delve into it. But, um, but yeah, so this was one of my, I've got to have that to purchases, Shakespearean tarot. And this is Dolores Ashcroft Nowicki. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just stunning. But you know, I collect the cards as well as use the cards. And that's, that's kind of sad, I know, but, uh, but it's just, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Now, what I do love is, and I've started to use it again recently. I, I used it for a while and then I stopped for a while and now I've picked it back up again and I'm loving using it again. So I get drawn to certain tarot decks for certain readings. And this one I got drawn to, I think it was the monthly, no, it wasn't the monthly. It was a pick a card reading I did recently that I got drawn to use this one and I really loved it. Um, and this is the Wild Unknown deck by Kim Krantz. And it comes in this beautiful little magnetic box. It has a wonderful guidebook. Look at this bad boy. Um, it has the picture of the card and the description. And I love this because the artwork is so different. It's mainly black and white, but it has these splashes of colour in there. And it's an animal-based um, tarot deck. I also have the oracle deck that goes along with this. Um, I'm running out of space. But, I mean, just look at this. We have the Mother of Cups instead of the Queen of Cups. You see these beautiful little splashes of colour. And... The Ace of Swords, you know, it's just gorgeous. The Father of Pentacles. I mean, I just really, really love the artwork. That's the Five of Swords. And I love this one, the Emperor. Because you stand straight and tall and strong like a tree, if you get the Emperor. So I, I just think it's beautiful. And inside it has a little saying um saying welcome to the wild unknown tarot you'll find no wrongs or rights inside this box only mirrors for reflection open your mind draw a card and have fun on your journey i just think that's lovely and so you know again this is this is one of those decks i don't use daily i don't use all the time but i do sometimes just get drawn to use it and i love it and it's it, to start with, I was like, oh, is this going to be... Sorry, I'm just going to pick the box up so I can put this away. I, to start with, I thought, oh, is this going to be one of those sort of like dark shadowy decks? But actually, I find... Personally, I find this deck very, very, very positive. I find it... Um, yeah, I find it a really positive deck. And, and I really like it. And, you know, um, I... I do like the stylized black and white with a splash of color. And I like the fact that it's all animal based. You know, I'm I'm very much um, a, a witch who loves animals. You know, I'm very connected to nature and, and stuff. So, you know, I just, I really like that. Now I do have a deck that I have done a video on this one. Um, so you can see the full videos on my walkthroughs with quite a few of these decks, actually. So do have a look at the walkthrough video section. But this one, um, The Beginner's Tarot by Juliet Sharman Burke, is a fantastic deck for a beginner. I mean, she's absolutely right. It is a beginner's tarot. It has a full, full beginner's guide. Look at this book. And my cat is just scratching the furniture over there. Um, you know, it is a full-on, proper 
guidebook. What I love about this, she has done something I've not seen done in other tarot decks. Now, I, I have obviously not got as many tarot decks as, as a lot of tarot readers out there, but I've never seen this in any other tarot deck that I know of, where she actually points out things in the pictures to look at to give you pointers on on and guidance on what you're looking at so you're not just pulling the card and going oh it's the ace of cups that means da 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 but you're looking at the picture and you're getting a feel for it and you're getting a sense of it and she gives you these little guidance notes of what to look out for of what to be aware of and it just kind of opens you up a little bit i think as a see she does it on all of them on um what they what the cards mean on a deeper level and she has the um the sort of the meaning of the card then she has the divinatory meaning um she doesn't do the reversals i don't think i don't yeah i don't think she does reversals but as a beginner it's probably a good idea not to try and confuse yourself with reversals anyway and I don't always read reversals. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And again, you get the little map thing that I had in my one, my original one, which, you know, if you want to do the uh, Celtic cross, then that's helpful. I just don't. And this is the back of the card. A beautiful sort of purple sunburst. I love that. And then the cards themselves are quite traditional, you know, so they're quite similar to the Rider Waite deck. And she's obviously taken her inspiration from the Rider Waite deck and, uh, and she hasn't strayed too far off the path with it. So it's, again, it's a really great deck for a beginner because you... The, there's no sort of confusion about what they mean. She's sticking to the same suits. She's sticking to the same or similar kind of artwork, just with her own twist on it. And, you know, they are they are absolutely beautiful, um, but very simple and very easy to follow and very easy to understand. So, again, in my beginner's tarot recommendations video I did recommend this one and I have done a proper walkthrough of it so like I say I've done a proper walkthrough of most of the decks I think now I also picked up The Witch's Wisdom by Phyllis Curot <coughs> excuse me and I picked this one up because I was watching Phyllis on the Hay House website um, or Facebook page rather, she was doing a live and she was using this and um, and I was sort of chatting with her through the the live and um, and I just really resonated with with her and I really liked her and I thought, you know what, I want to pick up her deck. I want to see what, what it's like. I want to see how I feel about it. Now, I haven't used this on my channel yet, um, but it's stunning it's really stunning i mean it comes in this beautiful box with the magnetic clip which i always like a nice box <laughs> and inside you have the book which is sort of i don't know if you can hear that it's sort of um it's like a textured card um almost feels almost feels like the old old style leather books did you know um but it's it's absolutely gorgeous it's full of information and it's got all the meanings it's got spreads the only thing it doesn't have um is pictures it does again it she didn't include pictures of the cards she just put the names of the cards and their meanings um but what she does with this is she does separate it out with wisdom, essence, counsel and magic. So again, it's a completely different read to just doing a normal tarot. And uh, and so for that reason, I haven't managed to use it on my channel yet. There's all this lovely writing on the inside. And then the cards themselves come in this beautiful little sack, um, protection sack. 
and she recommends you know how to cleanse how to bond with it all the rest of it which i did all of that um but then the cards themselves they're sort of um oracle card sized you know they're quite large cards they have this beautiful um design on the back and again i have done a walkthrough of this i think i've done a walkthrough of this one but again the actual depictions and the meanings like this one 18 guardian you know it's it's different from a regular tarot deck you have the ace of fire the seven of fire so she uses as um colette baron reed does she uses fire water earth and air rather than pentacles wands swords and cups you know i know those were in the wrong order by the way um so like you have craftsmen of earth here instead of like i think that's the page i think um don't hold me to that and uh you know so the but there's good you know there's good sort of uh beautiful representations in here of animals of elements of uh, you know of people it's quite a diverse deck in that respect um but again, not one I would recommend for a beginner because it is very, very different from a traditional tarot deck. And she does have a completely different meaning for her cards. You know, they are, it is very different. This is the witch's, witch's Wisdom Tarot. So it's a very specific type of tarot deck. So I would not recommend that you have this one if you are a beginner and you're wanting to learn traditional tarot. If you're a witch and you're wanting to just do tarot for self divination, this might be a great one for you to do because it's, you know, you do get the, the guidebook, which is wonderful. Um, and uh, and it's, it's very good. I've done a few readings for myself from it and it can be very accurate. It can be very helpful, um, but, I had to look in the book a lot to do it. So um, until I know it more, it's not one. I don't even know if I actually would use it on the channel. I don't know. We'll have to see. Watch this space, as they say. So then I have another tarot deck, um, the Vice Versa Tarot. And this one I really like. And I don't know why I don't use it very much. Um, it's beautiful. You know, it has this gorgeous book with it. Look at this. Full colour pictures. And it tells you the meanings of the cards, whichever side you get, whether you get the reverse of it or whether you get the front of it. It tells you the meanings of both sides. And you can see here, you know, they've got the cards with the, the reversal and the front. So you can see, because it is called the vice versa, and they have different meanings. Again, not a great one for a beginner, but beautiful. And I think the reason I probably don't use this one very much is because I get a little bit confused at times. It doesn't take much to confuse me these days. <laughs> but as you can see, you know, the cards are double sided. They have different pictures on either side. And because of that, there's no back to the card as such. Now, the thing is with this as well is it doesn't give you the name of the card. So like this one is the magician. It's fairly obvious. Um, this one is judgment. So you've got past, present and future, but it only has the numbers. It doesn't have the, the name of the card. Let me see if I can find. Oh, yeah, here we go. So this one is, I think, the king of pentacles. Yes, this one is the king of pentacles. So you have the two sides, sort of like a day and a night version. <laughs> I like it. But, um, you know, because you don't have the names of the cards on them, it can be confusing if you're not familiar with the tarot. Like this one is five of wands, I think. I think it's wands. Um, yeah, it's got the fire energy there. So, and then that one, the Seven of Swords, you know, you can kind of work it out 
because the pictures, obviously, they're holding a wand or they're holding a sword or they're holding a cup. Um, let me see if I can find a cup. And of course, I can't. Oh, here we go. No, that's pentacles. I see you have the two of pentacles, which if you know the two of pentacles, you know that that's the card of juggling. So that one makes sense. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's... And of course, I can't find a Oh, here we go. There's a cup. So then we have the nine of cups. Which is completely different on either side. Um, so you can work it out. It's not impossible to work out, but it's just not the easiest card deck if you are a beginner. And because it is two-sided, um, it's, it's even more confusing because you don't know which one you're supposed to read. And, you know, I do, when I do my shuffling, um, and picking my cards, I usually wait for jumpers out of the pack. Um, and so with this one, I'm never sure, should I turn it over when it lands down or should I leave it on the side that's facing up? So I do get a little bit confused by this one, but it is a beautiful deck. And once I'm more au fait with it, you're going to hear me saying that a lot, aren't you? But it's because I got very used to my certain tarot decks like the Lightseers and I kind of stuck with them and I got a bit lazy not lazy, but I got a bit attached to them and comfortable with them. So using new decks kind of throws me out of my comfort zone a bit. So we have now a couple of independent ones. Now these are, um, oh gosh, does it say her name on there? Yes, these are Danielle Noel. Now, whoops, Danielle Noel did the artwork for um the light workers oracle deck okay or the work your light oracle deck and the starseed oracle deck so she was the artist that did those now what she's done is she's gone away and she's created her own tarot decks um and she's done the writing and the artwork on these but these are completely independent. Whereas those ones were done with Hay House, these ones she has produced herself. These are independent cards and they are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's got a lovely guidebook with it. You know, it's got all the information, it's got spreads in there, everything that you need. Um, and the cards themselves are huge to handle. Let me just pick the others up so you can see apologize here for ducking down on the floor um but the cards themselves they're quite hard to shuffle if you've got little hands like me because look I really struggle to get my hands around those but they are beautiful they have this lovely golden edge to them the back of the card is this lovely shimmery golden and white back with the moon on because they're the, this is the moon version the moon child's tarot and the artwork she did not disappoint the artwork is stunning and i really love it you know and i use this one now quite often when i do new moon and full moon readings if i don't use the cosmic i use this one and i've i've got quite used to this one now and i'm I'm quite comfortable with it. I'm quite bonded with it. And I do really, really like it. And I actually prefer it. You have to order this directly from her website, by the way. There is a walkthrough on my channel of this one. Um, it's, uh, it's one that you have to order straight from her. Um, and she also did another deck, the Star Child Tarot. And this one, for some reason, comes in, I think, three different versions. And I got the pink one because, you know, I'm Pink Moon Tarot. And the boxes, again, they're beautiful. The artwork, again, the gold edging. It's got a nice booklet with it. You know, um, although it's lacking somewhat in pictures, I think. I think this one doesn't have minor. Yeah, it doesn't have pictures for the minor arcana and it has very small pictures for the major arcana which I was kind of disappointed with which you will see if you see the walkthrough but the actual cards themselves they're very pretty 
beautiful um, edging, beautiful artwork. I mean, you cannot fault her artwork at all. Absolutely gorgeous. I find this one more difficult to work with than the moon one. Um, I think it's because I put up a bit of a barrier to it because I was quite disappointed because it's not cheap. Um, so, uh, so I think I've been kind of pushing that one to the side because I haven't wanted to work with it because it just let me down a little bit. And then we have the El Goliath, which is my final deck here. And this one I use for shadow work mostly. I do use it in normal readings as well, but um, but it kind of lends itself to shadow work. It's absolutely gorgeous. You know, it's this big box. You have this enormous book with it, which is really extensive. Um, you know, it's uh, like, I mean, just look at all that information. It's It's a little bit overwhelming actually with with all the the information that that they've put in here but um but it's stunning and there are extra cards in this one and um, the cards themselves are inside here they've got these wonderful moths on the back um and they're black edged so a little bit classy again it's an independent tarot deck so you have to order it from the website um, and they sold out of the first edition. This is the second edition. They sold out of the first edition quite quickly and um, I couldn't get it. So I had to wait until I brought out the second edition. And in this edition, you've got half the deck have got white edge and half the deck have got black edge. The artwork is amazing. It does lend itself to shadow work because it is just that bit darker. Um, but you know, there's what I like about this deck. You have, you know, like here, the four of wands or the beaming vessel. And I love that. It's like, you know, there's just this little bit extra to it. And like I say, there are a few extra cards in here as well that, um, that you don't get in a normal tarot deck. I don't know how many exactly, but you know, we've got here the 10 of wands or the over overburdened beetle the only difficulty is i can't read it very well because the writing's very small on this this bit but as you can see they are stunning cards again not what i would recommend for a beginner but they are beautiful and um they're kind of these limited edition things that sometimes i just just go i've got to have that um and it cost a lot more than I would ordinarily spend on a tarot deck but I think it was worth it because they're just beautiful so that is my tarot collection I will do another one of these videos with my oracle collection um so do let me know do you have a favorite tarot deck is there something that um that you would recommend I get my hands on, you know? Is there a tarot deck that's maybe out of print now, of what, like one of these ones maybe that I've shown you that's now out of print that you think, oh, I wish I'd got that? Um, you know, drop me a comment, let me know. What is your favorite tarot deck? Which of these ones really spoke to you? Um, but until next time, please do remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Your support is very, very much appreciated. It doesn't cost you anything, but it means the absolute world to me. So have a wonderful day. Till next time. Namaste.